Hello. Hey guys. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, is the Colingo chat working? I don't know. Can someone type a message into the Colingo chat? Yes, okay, good. That's, it's working. Perfect. That's, that okay. is not working for me. It's not. It looks like it's working for me now, I think. Hello, hi, test. Oh, yes, it's, it's working now. Okay, cool. It wasn't working before, but they must have gone in and fixed it for us, so that's awesome. Um, hi, guys. Welcome. Welcome back. Um, so in this class, this is an intermediate and advanced class about travel. And today we're talking about models of ability and permission. So first we're just going to do a warm-up. Um, we'll talk about the grammar skill. And then I'll read a little bit of an article for you and we'll discuss it. So same format as the last couple of classes, okay? Uh, so to warm up, I typed a question for you guys, but what's your name? Where are you from? And what is the greatest place you've ever visited? So um, I don't know if you guys travel very often, or um, if not, then what's somewhere that you would love to visit? So for me, um, my name is Sam. I'm from Canada. And the greatest place I've ever visited was probably um, Paris. <laughs> and I actually lived there for a year, as you guys know, probably. Uh, probably my favorite place on the planet so far. And I also once visited a really nice city in Wales. It was really pretty, surrounded by water and mountains. Pretty cool. So we'll start with Arup. Could you introduce yourself and tell us what is the greatest place you've ever visited? Hello. I'm Arup from Mumbai, India. Uh, the greatest place I have, uh, the greatest place I have, oh, sorry. sorry. It's okay. Uh-oh. I think he dropped his computer or something. Are you there? Hello? Okay. Yeah. yeah, my headphones just fall down from my <laughs> head to my keyboard, so... Okay. Okay, I'm from Mumbai, India. So, uh, I, the greatest place I have ever visited is um, my city the, where I'm staying. It's Mumbai. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I love the city. I love being here. I love moving to here and there. The place, I love it. And why? Why do you like it? Cause it's very cool. It's it's very cool. Mm, how do I explain it? I, when it, wherever I go, I feel delighted. I love it. Okay, awesome. And uh, hi, Basam. Hi, who are you? Good. How are you? Fine, Sam. I'm fine, thank you. So, what's the greatest place you've ever been? Okay, my name is Bassam. I'm from Syria. I've been to few places actually, but the greatest place that I have been in was uh, Saudi Arabia. It was Mecca, mm -hmm. in which we performed. We call it Hajj. It's pilgrimage, and there okay. you feel very, very nice feelings. So, what exactly did you do? Can you explain it to us? Uh, in Hajj, in pilgrimage, we go there and there is a, we call it a Kaaba. Maybe mm -hmm. you can see uh, its picture in my avatar. Ah, okay. The black one. And we go around it and we pray for God and we see. This is one of the five pillars of Islam and we have to do oh, it. Cool. In case we have money and we can do it, of course. It's not compulsory. If okay, cool. Things. And was it just one specific, like, little village that you really enjoyed while you were there, where you did this? Uh, this is Mecca. It's um, actually a town or a city in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. in which we can perform pilgrimage or hajj. Great, cool. And where are you from? I'm from Syria. I'm now okay. in Damascus. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Bassam. And Welcome. hey, Omar. Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Cool. And what's the greatest place that you've ever visited? Actually, I've never been um, out of Egypt before. But if I would like to travel 
one day, I think um, I would like to travel um, to England because I love okay. the British. I love the British people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Me too. Um, if you ever go, I'll have to get you to hang out with my family. Half of my family's in England. I don't know if you guys know that too. I'm half British, so I've got lots of family over there, and they're they're very funny. It's all about British humor, right? Yes, I think, um, and also they are polite people. Mhm. Mm For sure. Cool. Um, where would you go in England? I think um, in Manchester. Okay, Manchester. Okay. Yes. Mhm. Mm Manchester is yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, British tea time. I really like the cities that are kind of along the water because they've got really good seafood. <laughs> um, okay. And London, of course, right? Of course, yes. Of course. <laughs> okay. Hi, is it Hiep or Tran? Hiep Tran? How are you? I'm good, thanks. Can, can you turn your microphone up a little bit? Uh, yes, my name is Hiep. I'm from Vietnam. The great, uh, the great place I have, I have been visit is uh, Ha Long Bay in uh, Vietnam. Have you... Um, have you... Um, been there? No, I've never been to Vietnam. Uh, yet. <laughs> yes. I hope okay, you, cool. Uh, yes, I hope you uh, can uh, uh, go uh, here to uh, um, view my uh, beautiful uh, lands, uh, lands, uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Someday. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, cool. And hi, Joyce. Hi, Susan. How are you? I'm fine. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm great, thanks. So, what's the best place you've ever been? The best place? Yeah, the greatest place you've ever visited. I want to visit London and I want to visit Canada. One day, uh, I flown today in Brazil. Mm -hmm. I flown to Chiba. Cool. Okay. Awesome. And Christoph, what about you? About me. Um, so in Poland, the best place is uh, Gdańsk. It's uh, on the Baltic Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, because I like sea. And I would go to Bristol. Okay, cool. Awesome. And Liliana, hi. Hi, Sam. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay, the best um, place I've ever visit, visited is Paris as well. I love it. <laughs> It's great, uh, right? <laughs> yes, and it's a beautiful city. Uh, mm -hmm. I like the environment uh, all about Paris. And also I like uh, uh, Horn in uh, the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a port. There is cool. uh, quite a uh, quite place. And um, I, I would like to, to know London or to visit London. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, uh, but when I was uh, in Europe, the money wasn't enough to go there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would like to someday. I I'll go next there next time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> next time. Okay. Cool. Um, and hey, Luis. Hi, Luis. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay, my name is Luis. I am 25 years old. I am from Chile. And the place, the the most beautiful place ever, I think that it's in the end of the world, is in Chile. Uh, it's called it in Toro del Paine. Mm -hmm. It's a famous place where you can practice hiking. And you can see amazing mountains and beautiful lakes in the end of the world. It's really beautiful. Okay, cool. Great. Um, <clears throat> so, 
Um, I'm actually going to change the question for Michael and Osama because we need to kind of switch over to a new question. So, um, Michael and Osama, we'll start with, is it Mikhail or Michael? Uh, Michael, I think. Michael, okay. Um, can you tell us two things about yourself? One thing that you can do very well and one thing that you can't. Oh, so ch change the question. Yeah, I changed it's, the question. <laughs> <laughs> I prepared to the, the previous ones. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw you a curveball, trick, switch it up. <laughs> what I can do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> I think that. Uh, um, hmm. I have no idea what to tell. I'm okay. not very well in anything. Okay. <laughs> what about like, um, is there a sport that you can play or? Um... Yeah, I'm good in swimming, for example. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, this this is one of the things yeah, I can tell. And one thing I can't. Uh, I can't speak English well. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Your English sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> oh, but it's, it's a long wait, I think, uh, to be really fluent in English. Uh, it takes time in any language, right? Practice, practice. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, cool. And Osama. Hi, teacher. I think, uh, I, think uh, I do it well. I think uh, avoiding, avoiding, avoiding people and the things I can do it uh, is speak uh, in front of people. Okay, so you can, um, you can do public speaking very well? No. Oh, you can't? I, I can't. Ah, okay. <laughs> so you can't do public speaking very well. What was the thing that you can do very well? I missed it. Avoiding people. I, I, I didn't hear it. Can you say it again? Uh, avoiding people. Avoiding people. Uh, run away. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> don't get on Osama's bad side, right? Or he'll just like avoid you all the time and won't talk to you. He's good at that. Okay. Um, cool. So today we're talking about, like I just said, about models. Um, one of them is Ken. So I'm just going to share my screen and we'll go over some of this, the grammar point. And then um, when we're finished that, we'll look at an article and we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay? So let's see. We'll go back to Arup. Arup, you're going to always be reading first with that position because your name starts with an A. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Let me read. Okay. Models of ability are simply help helping verbs that communicate the ability to do something and politely asking permission, can, could, able to, may I, could they. Very good. And then Omar, could you read the next part for us? Okay. Uh, models are a kind of helping verb. Today's lesson is one of the models used to communicate possibility and permission. Possibility, something that is possible, that can happen, and permission being told you can do something. Good. So <clears throat> we use models for lots of right? Um, today we're specifically talking about permission and possibility. Um, today we'll be talking about some other models and then again on Friday. So we'll be doing this subject all week, but the different types of, of models that we have. So today we're focusing specifically on just two kinds and making sure that we can use them properly. So can and could, able to, may, could they, etc. So that's what we're going to deal with today. Again, if something's possible, it could happen. It can happen. It's, it's a possibility. Um, giving permission for something, that's when someone says, yes, you can do it, or no, you can't. Okay. Um, good. Let's look at the next one. Uh, yeah, question? Hi. Um, can I ask you a question? Can you yes. explain to me the, the difference between can, can, I can, um, I can, uh, I can uh, I can uh, I can uh, spell uh, can or can I don't know the difference between them. 
Okay, between can and could? Can and can. In uh, English, they, uh, in English, they uh, speak can and can. But in, uh, can and can, uh, right? They, uh, they speak can and can. I, I don't know. Like if I say, um, yes, I could pronounce it, yes, you can, or yes, you can. Is that what you mean, the pronunciation? Yes, the, uh, the different uh, pronunciation between them. My cat just scared me. Um, yeah, so the pronunciation, uh, you can pronounce it either way, and it means the exact same thing. So you could either say you can or you can. You can't, like, this A sound, can or can or can, like that. Um, and it's, I guess, it might be something to do with accents or just kind of personal choice, but there's no difference in meaning. It's same with can, can't, and can't. Can't is pretty much always the A sound, actually, can't. Um, but it can either be can or can, and it means the same thing. It's just two different ways to pronounce the word. It's kind of like the and the, where they, it's kind of a personal choice thing. So, yep, if you hear uh, yes, you can, it means the same thing as yes, you can. It's just pronounced C-A-N, or it's type. Okay? Yes, yeah. Uh, any other questions so far before we kind of get into it a little bit more? No. No more questions. Cool. Okay. Um, Go sorry? Go for one. Go for it. Or you can say giver. <laughs> Before Kristoff, give her. It means go for it. Um, okay, good. Uh, yep, why don't you read the next one for us? Uh, the main model of possibility is can how to form sending with can subject uh, I see verb uh, plus can plus verb in a maria uh, can drive a truck they can fly the new Boeing airplane the past then is uh, subject plus could uh, plus verb. Mm. Jenny could sleep in a five hour and I went to see work in college. You can you uh, you can also you is were able to um, example I uh, I am able to run uh, uh, my in uh, six minutes. Um, negative form cannot, can, could not, and uh, I'm not able to. Uh, example, I can't swim at all. Very good. Okay, so, um, oops. So basically, you use your subject first, then can, then your verb, and then the rest of your sentences, right? Um, or if we're using it in the past tense, it turns into could. You wouldn't say Jenny can sleep just five hours a night when she was in college. You need to change it to could with the past tense. Okay? Yes. And again, that goes the same for couldn't. Couldn't. They couldn't sleep at all when she was in college. Um, we can also use is or able to when we're talking about um, ability. Say am able to. I am able to run a mile, or I was able to run a mile in six minutes when I was younger. Now I can't. Right? Um, negative form cannot or can't. Uh, I would recommend using cannot in your writing. Like if you're writing an essay or something, you don't want to use contractions. But when you're speaking, you'll probably use can't. We don't really say cannot in our speech. It's kind of more of a written thing. And this can't is more for speech. Um, could not, or what does could not turn into with a contraction? Couldn't. Couldn't. I'm not able to. And I'm not able to. I'm not able to. Not able to, right? We don't say am it in English. So I can't swim at all. Okay, so that's the main model of possibility. And then we also use models to make polite requests. Oops, let's get rid of that. Uh, Joyce, would you like to read for us?
Joyce? Okay, Christoph? Okay. Models are often used to make polite requests. Models of permission in order of politeness may, could, can. Polite requests model plus subject I, he, they plus please plus verb. Could you help me move tomorrow? Can they please turn down the music? Okay. Mm, okay. May is only used with I and we. May we share your table? Not. May you share your table? To being polite. Could already sounds polite. You don't necessarily have to say please when you're using could. I mean, it's always helpful, right? <laughs> it's uh, not completely necessary. Could implies kind of politeness a little bit. It's optional to use please. And you With, have to do at end. Sorry? Uh, and please, you have to put at end. May I use you could either put it at the end, could you help me move tomorrow, please? Or you can put it between the subject and the verb. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but not first. no, not first. So, this would be um, incorrect. I'll make it red. Impolite. Oops. Like this? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> please. Go out. Don't put please at the beginning like that. Okay. Um, it should either be between the subject and the verb or just at the very end of the sentence. So could you please help me move or could you help me move please? Um, when you're using can, you pretty much want to have please with it to sound more polite. Can can actually, it comes across as more familiar or even, not really rude, but not as polite as could. So please helps it sound a little bit more polite. We would use can um, so can is um, it's less formal, kind of more relaxed, but it's always nice to say please. <laughs> so yeah, you can either put it between the subject and the verb or at the end. I would always use please with can. And then may, we only use may with I and we. Okay, may we share your table? Um, may I? So this is something like shall? Um, it's kind of like shall, except we're using may for permission. So if you're using the word may, you're asking for permission to do something. May we share your table? May we join you? May I join class? If you use, sh um, like for example, to use shall, it would be like you. I'll, I'll use a different word. Shall I enter class? In this case, it's it's actually not for permission. You're not asking permission exactly. You're asking if they would like you there. So, shall we join class? They're like, yeah, come on in. Come join us. Shall we? Um, shall I? So, it's very similar, very similar, but you're not exactly asking permission. It's, it's almost sometimes used um, hypothetically. Did so, you, you would say, question? like, hey, shall we join you? And you're already sitting down. <laughs> like, you're, you're already halfway there. <laughs> So shall is used more hypothetically. It's not you're not really asking if it's okay. Um, whereas with may, you're really asking like it can I, is it okay? May I? And if they say no, then you won't join, right? So really shall simple. Shall or British than American? Shall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shall is shall is more often used in British English. Um, I almost never say shall to give you kind of an idea. I have an American accent, I'm Canadian. We don't really use shall very often. Mm -hmm. 
it's yeah kind of yeah more British but if you do decide to use it it's not for permission it's it's more just yeah just kind of asking uh, any other questions about these ones about could can may I have a question, teacher. sure um, listen may is only used with I and we right you 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 wrote may I join class so I may I yeah join this class. is correct yeah may I join yeah. class yeah this is correct may I join class uh. for you right um, so you can use it with I, I you was, can use it with I was Oops. a little confused because you wrote this with with red sorry Oh, right. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I was trying to only use red for corrections, but I uh, confused myself. So <laughs> these these are correct. I'll another incorrect one. Um, or may he... Um, may he enter the store? It sounds really awkward. So you usually wouldn't use it with a subject other than I or we. Pretty standard. Okay? Mm. Sorry about the red. I'll what keep the red for... Dog? Sorry? What about the dog? May he enter the store? About a dog. Yeah. So this is always kind of... Um, sometimes we use personal pronouns for animals and sometimes we use it. <laughs> right? Uh, mm. May he enter? Yeah, I guess that would be okay. May he enter? Can he come in? May he enter? I guess it would be okay if you're talking about an animal. When you're talking about a person, it sounds a bit strange. Um, so you'd usually just use it for I. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about may, could, or can? What about or, might? Hmm? Might. I think we're... Are we getting to might? No, we're not. I, I think might is Wednesday. Let me check my schedule. I believe I'm doing my this week. I will double check. Uh oh, I lost my schedule. I lost my schedule. Might might is Deduction Wednesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, let's take a look at the next bit then. So how do we answer? This is kind of the easier part. You either answer with yes or no, right? <laughs> Someone asks you permission, you're either saying yeah, you can, or no, you can't. Um, but we can answer a little bit more formal or less formal, depending on how you word what you're asking, answering. Uh, Liliana, could you read for yes? Okay, uh, yes. More formal, yes, plus subject, plus may, yes, he may borrow my car. Less formal, yes, plus subject, plus can, yes, you can leave early today. Good. Again, may, more formal generally, can, less formal generally. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if somebody asks um, like this, Did he borrow your car? Yes, he may borrow my car. For less formal, um, leave early today? Yes, you can leave early today. Okay? So, may will be in the response. If you ask with can, you'll answer with can. Okay? Um, for no, if you want to say no, uh, Lewis, could you read it for us? Or Louis, Louis. Uh, hi, teacher. Right now. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, for no, most formal, and uh, no plus subject plus may not. For example, no, you may not stay at our house. Okay. Medium for formal, no plus subject plus cannot. 
for example, no, no, Jenny cannot borrow money from me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Least formal. Uh, no plus subject plus can't. No, Bill and Ted can't go do, to the movie with us. Okay? Good. Of and course. of course, there are many other responses. It's of course, certainly, sure, sure thing. Um, so cannot, like I was saying, we don't really use it in spoken English. If you do say it, it sounds a bit formal. Um, but normally we would say can't. And same thing as with an affirmative answer. May is more formal than can. Right? So no, you may not stay at her house. No, they can't go to the movie with us. Can't is, oops, is like. Any questions about how to answer questions? <laughs> so, if you use uh, negative, you can use you. If you use negative, you can use what, sorry? Uh, you may not. Because uh, may we use for I and we. But may not, you can use for you. Ah, uh, right, yes. When it's in the negative, you can use it with you. When you're telling someone they don't have permission, you would ask, may I stay at, our, at your house? No, you may not stay at our house. Good point, Christoph. It's acceptable when may is in the negative, but not in the positive. So... Mm. Some of them. Um, Liliana? Yes, uh, in yes questions, uh, could he borrow your car? Uh, you can answer with uh, may? Yes, no, he may. Uh, yeah, you, just not when you're asking a question. Uh, uh, it's a, a, a sentence, but not asking a sentence. So in the answer, it's okay. In the question, it's not. Uh -huh. Just to confuse you. <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> it's okay in your response. It's not okay when you're asking the question. So you're, um, you're, you can use could if you want to ask that, if you want to use he in the question. Yes. Okay. But uh, and the answer is yes, I could. Either say yes, he may. Oh, he um, could. Yes, he, yes, he. You wouldn't, you wouldn't answer yes, he could. You would answer yes, he can. Okay. But not so the, uh, you, he is different. <laughs> yeah, so the oh. two possible answers would be yes, he may or yes, Okay. But he may is impossible. Car, I put it in red because I would caution against using that. You wouldn't like answer could with could. You would answer could with may or can. And Christoph, we were saying um, he yes, may. Yes, he may is impossible. It's okay when it's in the response, but not in the question. Yes, but what was with the question? The question is, could he borrow your car? Could he? Uh huh. And uh, or answer, the question uh, could you be. You can change to may. You can. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. So if I asked, could he borrow your car? You could answer, yes, he may borrow my car. That sounds very formal. Or you can say, yes, he can borrow my car. But you wouldn't say, yes, he could borrow my car. The only time I would do this is if you're going into some sort of conditional phrase where you'd say, yes, he could borrow my car if he, or like he could have borrowed my car if he had given me money, or he could borrow it if he gives me money. But just as a general answer, I wouldn't say, yes, he could borrow my car. Um, just because they're asking with could doesn't mean you have to use could in your answer. Okay. okay. So someone, could is the question word, right? Or can. Both of these responses can prompt answers with may or can. May. Okay. Okay. Um, and oh, may clear. may is more formal. Teacher. Can is less formal. Okay. Teacher. Yeah. You can you can use how how did you how you said? Yes, he could borrow my car if he paid me some money, for example. So if you're going to turn it into like a conditional phrase like this, then it sounds okay. Um, but just answering straight up, yes, he could borrow my car. Yeah, it's, um, 
it doesn't quite sound right mm. because it's implying that there's a condition that we uh, need yeah, to Yeah, a condition. Yeah. 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 So if you want to use could, you need to tell us the condition. Yes, he could when. Like when is it okay? We need to know the condition. Just as a, a straight answer like this, it's not going to work. Okay? Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions about questions? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'm going to unshare that for a minute. So, let's take a look at our article for today. Give you guys the link. So it's called The Newest Wonders of the World. And first of all, what is a wonder of the world? Can someone tell me? The more, the, the, something strange. The current place more amazing in the world. Right, the something. current most amazing places in the world. Good. Most amazing places. So the wonders of the world are actually um, decide. Someone decides that something is a wonder of the world, and then it makes the list. <laughs> okay. So there's actually a list of things that are considered wonders of the world. Um, in this case, she's kind of suggesting it should be considered wonders of the world. So it's the UNESCO. They convene and pick pick these places for the World Heritage List. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a few here. I think there's like 10 maybe, 5, 10. So let's just look at maybe one or two of them and then we'll talk about this topic. So I'll show you the picture first. Here's this place. Looks pretty. So this is the hill forts of Rajasthan, India. Is anyone here from India? Yeah, I'm from India. You're from India. Do you know where this is? I think it's Rajasthan. Yeah, have you seen this before? No, I haven't been to Rajasthan yet. It looks really pretty. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. this is the first one that they've uh, been talking about. So, I'll read this for you a little bit and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Um, and, okay. Each summer, UNESCO convenes to announce new picks for the World Heritage List, chosen for their cultural, historical, and environmental importance. From vast sand dunes and mountains towering over 22,000 feet high to magnificent palaces, the hill forts of Rajasthan, sorry if I'm saying it wrong, <laughs> India, over 1,000 years old, became one of 19 new inscriptions that bring the total to 981 sites in 160 countries. Fiji and Qatar were debuted this year. While the Medici villas in Tuscany, also a new member of the club, will continue to draw hordes of tourists no doubt there are other travelers who will welcome the challenge of visiting the off-the-beaten-track destinations singled out by UNESCO. Check out this year's new crop of wonders and see which ones speak to you. Um, just warning you guys that I am speaking at pretty much natural speed when I'm reading today. Um, I'm sorry if it's too quick. <laughs> it's just because it's an advanced class. So, do, do you guys know this expression? Speak to you? No. So this doesn't mean that these wonders of the world are actually talking, right? They're not mm -hmm. like coming to life and speaking. Um, it's an idiom. When something speaks to you, it attracts your attention and it makes you very interested in it. Yeah, it's something that speaks to you. So you could say like classical music really speaks to me. That would be another kind of example. Um, so these six forts are set among the rocky outcroppings of the Aravalli Mountains in India's Land of Kings and remain a standing testament to the power that Rajput princes enjoyed from the 8th to 18th century. The defensive walls, up to 12 miles around and incorporating natural defenses such as hills, deserts, and rivers, protected the ornate palaces, temples, and other buildings within. Um, let's look at maybe, I don't know, where should we go? Portugal? This one looks pretty cool. So we've got one from Portugal. China? Is anybody in class from China? I think. Yeah. I yeah, am. Ling Ling. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hey, we'll look at this one because we've got someone from China here. <coughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So this is, I'm going to pronounce everything wrong, Ling Ling. I'm so sorry. Um, Hong Hani Rice Terraces. <laughs> Uh, for the past 1,300 years, the Hani people in southern Yunnan have used a sophisticated system of channels to funnel water from the top of the Ilo Mountains to the terraces below. These 41,000 acres of terraces also form a unique integrated farming system, using buffalo, cattle, ducks, fish, and eel to support the production of red rice, the staple crop. The Hani still live in thatched houses between the mountaintops and terraces. Much like they have for a millennium, worshipping mountains, rivers, forests, fire. Hmm? Penny? How do I say it? Ling Ling. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay. Okay, got it. How uh, do you pronounce uh, this? Hani? Ha, uh, ha, uh, ha, hani. Hani? Hen. <laughs> ha, hani. It's written, in, oh. it's written in English characters. Um... Okay, so first of all, do you guys know what, um, where did it go? A thatched houses? What are thatched houses? Any ideas? I'll show you a picture. The name refers to the roof, really, more than anything where you've got kind of this style of roof. It's thatched. That's kind of a good example where it's like thatched and it's kind of built into the ground. Very old style. Um, so, yeah, we've got some other wonders. Woo, here's one from Canada. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and we've got one from <laughs> uh, Namibia. I don't know. Where is that? Fancy, cool. And there's some more. There's another page. Fiji, Italy, Mexico, Poland, and Ukraine. Oops, I just clicked on Poland. Qatar. Didn't someone say that Qatar was their favorite place? Or they live in Qatar? I'm not sure. Someone mentioned Qatar today. Anyway, so these are wonders of the world, and they've recently been added to UNESCO's wonders of the world list. Um, yeah, roof covered with straw hazel, exactly. Good. Um, so let's take a look at some discussions. What would you do if you discovered someone, someone, something, <laughs> not a person, something or somewhere worthy of the title wonder of the world? What would you do if you were walking around traveling and you saw like this amazing place? Would you tell someone? What would you do? This is for everybody. Anyone can answer. I would keep to myself. <laughs> You'd keep it a secret? <laughs> uh, I, I recommend this place uh, to my close friends. Okay. Would anybody like call UNESCO? and tell them, you have to make this a wonder of the world immediately. <laughs> I'd probably just tell people. No, because then I make this place crowd. Mm -hmm. Crowded. Yeah, so you'd say, then I would make the place crowded. Okay. What about... Better keep your secret. <laughs> Um, what are some questions you might ask if you were interviewing the person who discovered the wonder of the world? So pretend that I just discovered a really wonderful place and you're interviewing me. What sort of questions would you ask? Uh, my question Interview is... or interrogate? <laughs> Interview. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be interrogated. Um, was it Hiap was asking? Mm. I will ask uh, him uh, how uh, your feeling. Can you ask it again? Um, how are they feeling? How are they feeling? Good. How are you feeling about? How are you feeling right now about what you found? Yes. Okay. How are you feel, How are you feeling mm. about uh, the wonder of the world? Okay. Yes. Ling Ling, do you have a question for me? Um. 
I just want I just want to see uh which which uh famous uh place in your country because I have never been to Canada. So um, can you introduce about it? Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's lots of famous places in Canada. I think the best way is actually to ask you guys. Does it, because for me, <laughs> it's hard when it's your own country to say. But does anyone know of something a really famous place in Canada? Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. Niagara Falls. That's a Lakes. big one. Yeah, Niagara Victoria. Falls. Victoria Lake. Mm hmm. Yeah, some of the lakes. We've got um. We've got lots of lakes. Yeah, Niagara yeah, Falls and, um, and probably the Rocky Mountains are pretty uh, oh, popular. Oh, Rocky Mountains! Yeah, the Rocky, mm -hmm. the are Rocky Mountains famous. are on the west coast. Uh, Niagara yeah. Falls is about two hours from here, uh, where I am, and it's really cool. Oh, so Niagara Falls! Yeah, you know. My dream That's is cool. to climb the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> really? Really. Okay. I practice mountaineering. Mm hmm. Awesome. Is, uh... um, Omar says Nova Scotia. So Omar in Nova Scotia, it's the seafood. The seafood mm -hmm. in Nova Scotia is very good. Um, uh, actually, because one of my friends is living right now in Canada. He's mm -hmm. living in this city. He's living in Nova Scotia. Yes. Do you, that's the name of the province. Do you know which city he's in? Mm, actually, no, I don't. But he's in this. Uh, he's, he told me in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Yeah, Nova Scotia is a it's a it's a province. So it's like Ontario is a province. Oh. So I would say I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um there's lots of cities in Nova Scotia. It's pretty big. Well, it's not that big. But, um yeah, it's would, pretty popular. I would like to go to the forest or to see the beers and the fishing and salmon. In the rivers, I think it's amazing. A teacher. Yeah. Yes. I want to share my, my okay, favorite great. place. This okay. is Toro del Paine. It's amazing. This is amazing can place. Can you re can you refresh it? It turned black. I can't see it. Oh, okay, so oh there it is. Okay. Oh. There is a little problem. It. Can Can you see it? Yes, uh, kind of. It's flashing, but I saw it. Oh, okay. It's really pretty. It's like very blue. Yeah, lots of mountains. That looks really nice. Cool. Um, okay, here's another question, and I want you to try to use some of the models that we talked about today of permission. Um, I can see it now, Lewis. It looks very nice. Okay. It's Where is that? What? Where is that? Ah, it's it's in Chile, in the in the in the last region of Chile, in the mm -hmm. end of the world, in the oh, in the cool. south. Very cool. Um, okay, so how might someone decide what belongs in the wonder of the world category and what doesn't? So if we wanted to try to use the models, think about trying to use can. Um, so I would say, could Niagara Falls be considered a wonder of the world? How would you answer that? Could Niagara Falls be considered a wonder of the world? Yes, uh, they could. Oh, they may. Okay, so in this case, you can use could in the answer. Because it's a condition. The question I'm asking: Could it be considered? You would say yes, it could, um, if you consider how massive. The, I don't know. You could use it in an if phrase like that. Um, so try to use some of the models. Hey, Fergan, welcome. You're late. <laughs> it may, um, may consider one of the one of the world. <laughs> Yes, maple syrup should be considered a wonder of the world. <laughs> so why don't we make a moose statue, like a 400 meters? Oh, you know what would be really cool if it was like a moose statue, um, like one of those fountains where ma maple syrup is coming out of its mouth, and then there's like a maple syrup um, pond. Uh, Christoph, can you think of a question? 
how how might someone decide what belongs in this category and what doesn't? What are what's the criteria? Criteria. Hmm. They can choose what they want. <laughs> okay, they can choose what they want. That's true. They can. Um, do you think there are some guidelines that they follow, or no? <laughs> mm, I think they could make some surveys, and then they could decide. Okay. Very good. Very good. And Omar, what about you? What What do you think? How How might someone decide what belongs and what doesn't? Oh, sorry, teacher. Can you please the question, please? Sure. Um, how might someone decide what belongs in the wonders of the world category and what doesn't? So, what is the criteria for deciding what is a wonder of the world? Do they just guess or? Actually, uh, I don't know. No, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I just had to um, block someone. Um, so, for example, I would say something might be considered a wonder of the world if it's a thousand years old. So I would say UNESCO can choose ancient artifacts and ancient places uh, as wonders of the world. So a lot of the time it has to do with age, right? How old something is? Yes, you can, for example, find like this statue and it might be uh, 2,000 years old. But mm -hmm. you cannot say, wow, this is a wonder of the world. Such okay. a cool rock. So what can you do with a really, ex really old ancient artifact? What can I do about what? Put it in a museum, right? <laughs> <laughs> so wonders of the world aren't usually just artifacts. They're actually like places. Um, the history of the place, I think. The history, yeah, they, so good. They can find very interesting the history. Um, another way that we UNESCO can choose places based on so you could say they can choose um, places based on it based on their history, their age, um, the stories behind them, right? But I think teacher the, the history, the history. Sorry, Omar. I think uh, the history and the age are the main uh, principles. I think. Oh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an important event. Uh, yes, happened. because in Egypt we have we have uh, the pyramids and the Sphinx. I uh, think they are from the seven wonders of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I guess uh, Eiffel, Ta Eiffel Tower is I one of I the know, yes. world of the wonders, but it's not that old, and I don't know. It's not maybe you, you can't say unique, but there are more interesting things than that. Maybe there are something else that we don't know while they're choosing their criteria. Mm -hmm. So I said you could say um, they can choose places that are architecturally pleasing. So sometimes it's a really fancy building, a uh, really great quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not always about how is he doing that? Uh, pyramids. Should be ra raised like that. Rise. Raised. Oh, raised. Why do you think that? Raised to the like wiped out, Kristoff. Yes. Why? Why do you think that, Kristoff? Uh, sorry, George just muted you. I'm I'm kicking him out, but um, having trouble. Um, why do you think that, Kristoff? Because they are ugly. <laughs> oh wow. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone disagree? Yes, I disagree. Of no, of I course, think. I disagree with him. <laughs> Why? They are amazing. I think he's just they see... killed them. These things without nose, they are ugly. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, Omar, what do you think? Of course, I disagree with him because it's uh, the the history of our ancient ancestors, the pharaohs. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you think that they are ugly, in your opinion, Christo? Chris? Because he don't have nose. But the reason that that's gone is because of the length of time that it's been there. It's so it's an ancient artifact, and things rub down over time, right? I just banter with you. I know. I know. <laughs> I said he's being a troublemaker. <laughs> um, okay, here's one more question before we leave. How would you convince UNESCO to name your favorite geographical location a wonder of the world? If you, um, I, I mean that you should ask them questions. Like, could you please name it a wonder of the world? <laughs> so try to ask questions with could. Um, let's start with Liliana. How would you convince them? Uh, uh, say, um, uh, could you mention uh, one of the uh, uh, wonderful places in, in my country okay. that, that you ever ever seen before? Because we have beautiful and wonderful places here that uh, many people don't know about. You choose one. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> the the seven colors of uh, a lake in uh, a region uh, called in my country Llanos Orientales. Oh, it's, it's really amazing. <laughs> I've never been uh, seen something like that. So what is it? It's, it's a natural uh, Yes, a natural lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has seven colors inside him because of the, uh, uh, of, of the deep, of the, sorry. Uh, of the color of the land uh, inside it. What's so it called? You can see it red, uh, blue, yellow in the same lake. Uh, What's it so called? I think it's one of the <laughs> wonders in the world. Because oh, really? I haven't seen. Uh, Do you know the name of it? Lake these uh, colors over the world. Multi. Do you, Do you know what it's called? The name of it? Uh, Crystal, Caño Crystal. Oh, I won't be able to spell that, will I? Crystal Canyon. Uh, canyon. Oh, Crystal Canyon? Uh, Crystal Canyon, yes, maybe. I don't know how to say that in English. Crystal mm. Canyon in Colombia. No? Ooh. Is that bad? Oh, I don't see it. But is that all? It's already a wonder of the world? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> we it wish. <laughs> It's okay, a, cool. uh, a secret place in my country. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, but then you'd get all sorts of tourists, right? Yes, yes, I recommend uh, this place to tourists. But um, many people, in, even in my country, uh, doesn't know about this. Uh, this place exists in Colombia. Mm -hmm. mm. It's kind of like a secret, a well kept yeah. secret. <laughs> <laughs> I try to do uh, it, and 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 I put the link here. Nina, where are you from? I'm from Colombia, South America. Oh, good, Colombia. Okay. Firkin, is the CN Tower a wonder of the world? Of course not. So they're just showing the picture of it. I don't know why. Hmm. There are a lot um, of sk skyscrapers. I was going to say it's not that great. <laughs> um, okay, guys, we're almost out of time. Does anyone have any questions for me about uh, the new just in the last minute or two. Visit Jordan, Doc. Jordan's giving yeah, us a little... Yeah, because my country have one previous, uh, one of the, a new world wonder. When they elect the new one, is the Petra. And uh, okay, cool. that's new, which is the lowest point in the earth. Mm -hmm. Minus uh, 300, maybe 95 meter below the earth. Below the earth's surf surface, not below the earth, sorry. Do anyone know Isla Pascua? Yes. 
Mm -hmm. Easter, yes, and they have uh, some Easter statues there. there. Yes, I heard about them. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing native culture there. Mm -hmm. I sorry, it's, it's not a river, Samantha. It's not a lake. It's a river. The river of the seven. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I I really want to see a picture of it. I'm gonna Google and see if I can find it, Liliana, because I'm really curious. But maybe there aren't lots of pictures because it's still like kind of a hidden gem. Have you heard that? A hidden gem. I I put the link the link here. Maybe oh, you. you can oh, you see. did. Okay. Uh -huh. I see. Oh, it's so cool. It's like purple and pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It so looks nice. awesome. You have the opportunity to go there. Do it. <laughs> Don't <Okay>. think twice. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, I've got to go, guys. Thanks for coming. Um, I've given you all my links. If you scroll up a little bit, they're right there. And hopefully, I will see you soon. Tomorrow, I'm teaching at the same time. And my schedule is on Facebook, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.